Hi everyone, my name is Daniel. Welcome to our podcast. Today, we're here to introduce you to an exciting and effective teaching approach called PBL, or Project Based Learning. I'm here with two students who will help us to understand how PBL can be used for language acquisition. Please, could you introduce yourselves? Hello everyone, my name is Diego and I have been studying about language teaching for a considerable amount of time by now. Well, I'm Bianca and I've been studying active teaching methodologies for a few years. Great to have you both here. So let's start with the basic concepts. What is PBL? PBL stands for Project Based Learning. It's a student centered teaching approach that encourages active learning and problem solving. That's right, and it can be an incredibly effective way to develop linguistic awareness in relation to the language they are learning. How fascinating! Diego, can you explain how PBL works? Sure. In PBL, students work in projects that require them to create something meaningful or solve a real-world problem. And Bianca, how does this methodology could be applied to language acquisition? Okay, well, PBL projects cover a wide range of topics and language skills. For instance, to have students plan a trip to the supermarket using the target language while they look at some images of fridges and create a shopping list, although they have to keep in mind that they have a limited budget. This project sharpens their vocabulary, writing, and even negotiation skills when writing the list. That sounds much more engaging than memorization. I agree. Um, PBL engages students in authentic language use. It can promote communication, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills, which are essential for mastering a new language. That seems to be wonderful and really effective. But how do teachers guide students in PBL? Actually, they act as facilitators in PPL. They provide support, resources, and guidance when needed. They might also help frame the project, set learning objectives, and assess students' progress. But the emphasis is on students taking ownership of their learning, being autonomous. So, is it a collaborative approach? It's highly collaborative. The students work together, share ideas, and learn from each other, just like in real life, where communication often involves interaction with others. It sounds like PBL not only helps with language acquisition, but also prepares students for the real world. Absolutely. PBL is known to improve language fluency, cultural awareness, and problem-solving abilities, which are all crucial in becoming proficient in a language. I'm really interested in PBL. I'll have to explore PBL further and see how it can be integrated into my teaching learning approaches. PBL can be adapted to various levels and languages, making it an effective method for language learning. It makes learning a language an exciting and immersive journey. Now that we know what PBL is and its potential in language acquisition, let's improve our knowledge and understand how PBL can be implemented effectively in language classrooms. Diego, could you share some specific examples of PBL projects for language learners? Sure, I can give the example of a storytelling project. The students will be tasked with creating an ebook in the target language and to fill it with text, images, and audio narration. This project encourages creativity and language use. That sounds like a fun and engaging way to learn a new language. Another example could be working within the student's community, developing and assisting social projects. Students work together to identify a community need and then design and implement a project to address it, all while communicating in the target language. That's a great way to connect language learning with critical literacy and real-world impact. So, it's clear that PBL can make students feel more confident in language learning and the process will be more effective, but what are some of the specific benefits it could offer? 
I believe that one great benefit is to increase the motivation to learn. When students start to understand the real-world relevance of their studies, they become more interested in learning. Additionally, PBL enhances critical thinking and problem-solving skills, which are important considering we live in a society that needs those skills. Language learners become better equipped to handle challenging situations and adapt to different linguistic contexts. It seems like PBL not only helps students become more proficient in a language, but also empowers them with different skills. For teachers interested in implementing PBL in their language classrooms, what are some practical tips? Choose projects that relate to students' interests and goals. This will make the learning experience more engaging and attractive to them. Second, um, provide clear guidelines and assessment criteria to ensure that students understand the expectations and can track their progress. And what about assessment in PBL? How can teachers evaluate students' performance in these projects? Assessment in PBL should be related to both the process and the final product. Teachers can assess how well students collaborate, communicate, and solve problems during the project, as well as the quality of their final product. Finishing our discussion on PBL and its role in language acquisition, I want to thank our guests Diego and Bianca for sharing their insights and knowledge with us today. Thanks, it's been a pleasure. And I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. And to our listeners, we hope you've gained a deeper understanding of how PBL can help language learning, make it not just a classroom exercise, but an immersive and empowering experience. That's all, folks. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe. And don't forget to share with other teachers. Listen to our other episodes about language teaching learning. See you.